the purpose of music publishing and the purpose of owning your intellectual property is not to just sit on your works, not to just sit on the things that you own, but to actually make those things work, things work for you and earn you money. So as we always talk about and we say, for anyone that's new here, um, your music publishing and your intellectual property, here we're talking about music publishing, but we always say your intellectual property is no different than a piece of real estate. So what that means is if you own a thousand pieces of real estate, just as he was saying, a lot of times artists, producers, and people that own compositions, you know, they're very particular about who they allow to sample their music, right? They don't want a lot of people sampling their music. They feel like, hey, man, this is my song. This is my creation. But I will go ahead and tell you while someone told me when I was very young that 100% of zero is nothing. That's another one. 100% of zero is nothing. What that means is you can own 100% of something, but if that something is not generating any assets, right, or any money or creating anything for you, then that means nothing. However, 1% of something generating a million dollars is a million dollars. So what he's saying is, hey, make sure that you understand, right? He basically essentially said he has a publishing administrator. He has someone that reaches out on their behalf who helps, you know, with the registration of everything that they do, making sure that his compositions are properly registered. That's what we can do here um, with B-Stars Publishing. And also, he works his catalog. He allows his music to get sampled. So he was talking about how the Pussycat Dolls to sample one of his songs to make the hit song, Don't You? Last thing about this video is artists that sampled it allow, allow their music to be sampled gen, ten, tend to have a longer career and it also boosts the value of their catalog on the actual sound recording side. So for example, we watched a video earlier of Travis Scott. Travis Scott samples a lot of music from 3-6 Mafia. A lot of people call him Triple Six Mafia. I call him 3-6 Mafia. Travis Scott samples a lot of their music. Um, I was just listening to a song, I think it's called No Bystanders, where he sampled their Tear the Club Up. They're, they allow a lot of artists to sample their music. They clear a lot of samples, and they have people that they own their publishing. They have people that administer their publishing. And what they do is they generate large amounts of revenue, and it keeps them relevant because they're working their songs. So if you all are in a position you have an opportunity to have sam people sampling your music or to partner up with the people to let your songs take on another life. I would recommend that you do that um, because it's very, very important and you never know, um, you know, what song would take on a new life. Like this song, Who I Smoke, um, that was put out by Young and Ace. Vanessa Carlton had a single um, and she, I'm not sure she wrote or whatever, but the underlying composition for that song that Vanessa Carlton um, had is now being sampled by so many artists. And what happens is it causes her catalog, her, 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 the value of her catalog to, to rise. So it's always important that you're thinking about that, realizing that your intellectual property is like a piece of real estate. And just because you own a thousand pieces of real estate, the value is not necessarily at its highest if none of those things are rented out.